Assume that different groups of couples use a particular method of gender selection and each couple gives birth to one baby. This method is designed to increase the likelihood that each baby will be a girl. But assume that the method has no effect, so the probability of a girl is 0.5. Assume that the groups consist of 56 couples. Complete parts A through C below. Number part A, it says find the mean and the standard deviation for the numbers of girls in groups of 56 births and then use the formula below to calculate the mean of the binomial distribution, where n is the fixed number of trials and p is the number of successes in one of the trials. Okay, so we're looking for the mean to be, uh, the formula is mean or mu is equal to n times p. So we want to find the values of n and p. Well, we know that n is equal to 56 because that's the groups of 56 births. We know the probability of a girl is 0 0.5. So now we're going to calculate the mean. So the mean is going to equal n times p, which is 56 times 0 0.5, and that equals 28. Now we need to find the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation, okay, we're going to use the formula below. Um, to calculate the standard deviation of the binomial distribution, where again, n is the fixed number of trials, p is the probability of success in one of the n trials, and then q is equal to 1 minus p is the probability of failure in one of the n trials. So here is our formula, which is equal to the square root of n times p times q. So we're going to calculate q first. Well, q is equal to 1 minus p. We know that p is 0.5. So 1 minus 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.5. Now we're going to calculate the standard deviation and then rounding it to one decimal place. So the standard deviation is equal to the square root of n times p times q. So we're going to take the square root of 56 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. Well, that gives us 14. If we take the square root of 14, we get 3.74. And then we need to round that to one decimal place, which gives us 3.7. So now we have the mean and a standard deviation. Now for part B, it says, use the range rule of thumb to find the value separating results that are significantly low or significantly high. The range rule of thumb states that values are significantly low or high if they differ from the mean by more than two standard deviations. So for significantly low values, they would be less than or equal to the mean minus two times the standard deviation. And for significantly high values, it would be greater than or equal to the mean plus two times the standard deviation. Well, recall from our previous part, we found the mean to be 28 and the standard deviation was 3.7. So we're going to calculate the maximum significantly low value, which is the mean minus two times the standard deviation. So 28 is the mean minus 2 times the standard deviation of 3.7, and that gives us a value of 20.6. And now we're going to calculate the minimum significantly high value, which is the mean plus 2 times the standard deviation. So now we're going to take 28 plus 2 times 3.7, which gives us 35.4. So the values between those two numbers are not significant. So the values between 20.6 girls and 35.4 girls are not significant. Now part C, it says, is the result of 38 girls a result that is significantly high? And what does it suggest about the effectiveness of the method? Now compare the result of 38 girls to the minimum significantly high value of 35 point girls found in part B. Now if you notice that the result of 38 girls is greater than 35.4 girls. And so if the result is significantly high, it would suggest that the method for increasing the likelihood of a girl is effective. So therefore, the result is significantly high because 38 girls is greater than 35.4 girls, and as a result of 38 girls, 
would suggest that the method is effective.